think it's in that car, okay. but I don't have my that reliable right car. Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the uh, uh, City of Morro Bay Water Reclamation Facility Citizen Advisory Committee. My name is Bill Woodson. I'm vice chair. I will be chairing today, but our chair, John Diodotti, is with us, audio, remotely. Uh, hi, John. Can you hear all this? I can. Can you hear me? Yep. You're on. You're on. You could be a little louder, but you're fine. So... Uh, I think we're, we've got a quorum. Uh, Madam Secretary, have you got uh, the attendance? So are you happy? Yes. All right. Okay, well then uh, I'm going to start this with a uh, 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 call to order and uh, we'll have a moment of silence uh, for it especially maybe for my old buddy George Sheffield, uh, he passed, and uh, he's a he, he was one of the good guys, and uh, uh, I miss him very much. Thank you. May we uh, stand and say the pledge of allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, that gets us to announcements and presentations. Uh, Rob, you want to take that? Um, reminder that there is a joint meeting of the Morro Bay City Council, Cayuca Sanitary District, uh, tomorrow night, uh, this room, um, 6 p.m. So this room is the Morro Bay Community Center uh, multi-purpose room. So that'll be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. A uh, couple of items on the agenda, that which looks real similar to your agenda, as a matter yeah. of fact. The, um, the RFP and the MOU, so they'll be looking to discuss those. I also emailed you um, earlier today a copy of a letter that went, already went to council, um, a letter from to Dave Buckingham and Rick Kuhn from Ken Harris at the regional board. I intended to print out enough copies for everybody just in case, but um, the machine ran out of toner just as I left the room, so you know, uh, just in time delivery um, or, uh, 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 didn't work in this case. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I do have a few copies if you haven't seen I it. Read this. Okay. If anybody, uh, <clears throat> do, do you, are you going to give us a little tap dance on it? I can give it? you a little synopsis. I can give you a little synopsis um, of the letter. This was. Um, um, sent February 19th by Ken Harris, the executive officer for the Central Coast uh, Regional Board, um, acknowledging that the Morro Bay City Council made its decision on its site preference, um, recognizing that we did a lot of work to um, get us there, encouraging us to work together. Um, uh, this letter um, talks about groundwater recharge being the most important uh, um, use of reclaimed water in uh, their mind and um, it, making sure that we know that uh, um, the state has a groundwater sustainability management act and that we should, um, although the Morro Basin is not a critical basin in the state's plan, that we should probably voluntarily look at creating a um, um, management plan for that groundwater basin. Um, also, he reminded us that uh, um, our 301H permit has expired and that the next permit um, we will likely have only until uh, 2021 to have the new plant operational. So um, I'm 
viewing that as December 31st, maybe 1159. <laughs> 2021. 2021 <laughs> to have the plant operational, which is not that far off. No, no, um, no. It's um, six years and a few months. So um, it fits right in line with the council's adopted schedule of having it in operation five years from the next permit. Um, we knew that was a likely um, outcome from the regional board. That's one of the reasons why council adopted that resolution to um, have that operational. Those are the two um, comments that I have, and I still do have two copies if anybody desires a hard copy, but it's in your email also. Before we go any further, does anyone have any questions on for Rob on that letter? Especially. I, especially. Yeah, I, I do. Um, with the Non issuance of another 301H waiver, how is that going to, well, since you're here, Bruce, how is that going to affect um, the operation of the plan, especially with the um, uh, new state parks? You know, we have two state parks now. We're going to have two RV dumping stations and uh, um, odor control chemicals. How is that going to affect your treatment there to the, the, uh, deal with that? Um, I'm, the, I'm expecting that the permit that will be issued by the regional board will not be a 301H waiver, but it will have interim effluent limits that will look a lot like the permit that we're operating right now. So they recognize we can't meet full secondary treatment requirements 100% of the time at, with current operations. Um, what I have gathered from regional board is that they will issue a, a full secondary permit with interim effluent limitations that will still allow us to, to maintain compliance for the next five years. The critical part is that after 2021, when if the new permit is issued, let's say in 2015, or early 2016, you get five years. And after that five year period is up, they can help you for another five year period if you're making progress towards your facility. But if they so choose at that point, they could start to implement um, penalties for not meeting full secondary treatment compliance. So how is that different than a 301H waiver? In a lot of ways, it's the same permit. It's just going to be a different flavor, a different color. OK, we're going to go around the corner here. Okay. Yeah, I have a quick one for you, Rob. In his letter, he, he inferred pretty heavily that he wanted to see groundwater recharge as the use for the effluent from the facility and, and how I read the letter. I could be wrong on that. Um, either direct injection or, or um, percolation pond kind of situation. Have they ever given you any um, clues as to whether they would allow more um, well pumping in the Morrow Creek Basin as a result of doing that? Because I think up to this point in time, City Council or at least my guess was some of their thoughts were to actually take the re the water that's reclaimed and directly trans you know transmit it to users per se be it the farm fields out in the valley or anything else uh, has regional water quality ever given you some kind of trade off if you were following that particular so that's regulated by a different division of the state the um, um, uh, uh, State Water Resources Control Board does all the water rights uh, permitting. So um, it's clear from discussions with the state and our water rights attorneys that, you know, we have rights to that, the discharger has rights to that effluent, but we probably will need to go through some permitting process because we'll be putting into the ground. And we want to make sure that everybody knows that um, we, we are a, um, Um, the city. city, yes, we are a city. Um, we are a appropriative user of water from that basin. We're not an overlier or a rep riparian user, so um, we have a, a permit requirement to extract water. So we'll be talking with the State Water Resources Control Board to make sure that everybody's clear on that. So that's one half of the question. Kind of the other half is, you know, 
we've talked mainly about d direct use of reclaimed water, but that's not the only thing that the council had in their goals. Yeah. They also wanted to explore groundwater recharge. So it's, it's one of the things that we'll be looking at early on. Um, you know, we have to make sure that that basin is appropriate for, uh, we just don't want another um, ocean outfall. I mean, it's, it's a flowing underground river is the way it's classified. That's why the state board has regulatory authority over it to uh, manage that, that basin. Uh, well, so, I was going to say, because I have no problem with the groundwater recharge he speaks to, but it, it kind of bothers me if they're not going to have a, you know, a trade-off for that, that somehow we have an ability to kind of get some of that water that we'd be recharging the base. That would be beyond his authority to... Yeah, uh, and, and thank you. Yeah, you you yeah. cleared me up on okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Paul. No, I don't know. Valerie. Um, I was wondering if the treatment levels that they identify in paragraph two and three were considered as part of our original studies in, in terms of development of the plant and costs. <clears throat> are some of these additional to what we had um, discussed or what, what had been discussed? I, I believe that the council has already gone beyond um, full secondary um, as a goal. So we're looking at um, tertiary treatment as a, as a you know, minimum for this uh, new facility. Um, some of the other treatment requirements, the nitrate removal, um, Talks about tertiary treatment twice there, but tertiary treatment, supplemental treatment for groundwater uh, recharge. And we'll just leave it that, groundwater recharge. Um, probably unlikely that we'll be doing direct injection of wells because just of the, the geologic nature of the basin. Um, but um, we would need to do that anyway, and as part of our the, the um, facilities master plan, we want the consultant to take a broad brush and be creative with looking at all those um, treatment regimes. Likely, um, if we remember the Larry Walker presentation, that salt nutrients will be a component of our permit, so we will need to um, address those also. Okay. They were talking about um, secondary biological processes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the next paragraph, nitrate removal, uh, either by secondary biological process or by post tertiary <laughs> So those are all within the, the purview of what we had previously. Correct. <laughs> Dale, Dale. I'm good. Okay. Um, I my only comment is is would we as a uh, uh, as you as project manager keep track of milestones and appraise the board as we progress as a requirement or as a courtesy or how is that administered? Let me um, restate the question to make sure that I understand that. So as we move forward in the project, uh, um, I could see something similar that we deliver to council, um, our um, project status update. And we should probably, that's a good point, we should probably include that with this uh, committee also, so that you know exactly where we're at in the um, project at any uh, given time. Okay, thanks. Hey, John, are you there? Yes, I am. You got any questions uh, for staff before we proceed? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well that... that and, and, and just so you know, I, I was advised to put the phone on mute, so if it takes me a while to respond, it's because I'm just getting the phone Oh, we, we're in no hurry. We're, we'll okay, wait, we'll wait you. for you. <laughs> thank okay, you. That, uh, that gets us to public comment. I see some public. Is there any comment? No comment. All right. All right, that gets us to the consent calendar. Very nice minutes. Thank you. Thank you for appending uh, the subcommittee reports of last meeting, and we appreciate that. I think it's good history, and it's good input, and, uh, and we appreciate the subcommittees formalizing those uh, reports, and they're nice to re refer to, and thank you very much. 
So, is there any comments at all? I don't need to go around the, the corner here. All I need to do is hear if anybody has a comment other than I move. I move that we approve the uh, minutes as stated. I second. I need a second. I second. Okay, that's good. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we got it. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, if, uh, yeah. if I might, I just yeah. want to um, uh, forewarn you on uh, the city is changing the policy on the way we're going to be doing minutes uh, with all our uh, the city council and advisory boards. You might have seen it so far on the city council where they're more or less action minutes with links in the minutes to the YouTube video of where that item takes place. So oh, um, we're, we're going to be entering the 21st century here. My and uh, so you'll, you'll see what action took place um, in written format. But if you want to, instead of reading the detail, you'll, you'll have a link to a YouTube video. The city has now a, a YouTube uh, page where we upload um, all those um, um, meetings to. So um, that's a, um, a slight change in operations. So there's no escape of he said, she said, we said, they said. Huh? You still will need to approve the action minutes so that we got your action clear, but the details won't be rec recorded in written format anymore. I have a quick question, Rob. I did go online to YouTube, and I did see all the city council videos of the different meetings for the last several months. Um, are they doing the other ones like the RIPC committee, or are they haven't gotten to that point yet. We know. haven't gotten to that point oh. yet. So um, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing. It, it's it's a learning before. process. Oh. Uh, our new city manager is uh, dragging us into uh, uh, the modern era. Um, it is smooth. And the nice thing I like about it is when you stream the uh, local AGP video, sometimes you have trouble with breaks and glitches. On YouTube, it comes through very clear. And that's one thing I didn't notice. OK. This gets us then to old business, and the old business starts with uh, subcommittee uh, reports. And so I will ask each one of the subcommittees if they have anything to say at this time for this meeting. And we'll start with finance. We don't have a report. Okay. Do you have anything to say? I don't. No, I, <clears throat> I just have a few comments. Is this All good? Right. Good. Okay. Um, first of all, I, I sincerely hope that um, the staff does a, puts together a, a community relations plan and um, starts to conduct the outreach for some of the items that we had mentioned um, during the last meeting. And I wanted to raise to the public um, This excellent article that was done by uh, David Buckingham, and from my understanding, he pro he provides um, information to the Bay News. I think on a, on a is it on a weekly basis? On a weekly, uh, as often as they're published. I'm not sure what they're every two weeks. I think they're published now. Okay. Well, the one I'm looking at right now um, is dated March 5th to 18th, and um, for folks who haven't read this yet, it's uh, on business matters and. It's uh, entitled, Water, Sewer Rates Must Rise, The View from Harbor Street. Um, and it's very, very well written, very succinct, and I think that's important information. And along, along those lines with the, uh, the sewer rates, I noted that um, in the minutes from um, the last meeting, you had said that uh, in March you're going to be um, initiating the Prop 218 process. Is that correct? Um. We will go to council on March 24th to have them approve the um, notice of publication and then have it, we'll have the Prop 218 hearing in May. So we'll initiate the process 45 days prior to that May hearing. So um, towards, uh, let's see, mid-April probably is when the actual notices will go out, maybe a little bit before that. Okay, and then either, other than putting a notice in the newspaper, what, what other outreach tools are you going to be using to inform the public about that? Every property gets direct mail okay, for the um, ballot, so. 
Okay, and I, I noticed also in the minutes uh, that you clarified that um, when you were talking about the sewer rates, you were really talking about phase one. It's not going to include, the sewer rates as proposed are not going to be including the reclamation component and, and because that's under phase two. And I was wondering, when are you going to bring in those costs and let people know about them? So phase two costs, um, the w water reclamation project trans transitions from a wastewater project to a water supply project. Mm -hmm. Um, those are beyond the scope of this five-year study. The, your study for rates are only good for five years. So um, as we get uh, further along and have some detailed costs, we can proceed forward with that rate analysis also. So it's probably going to be about five years from now when we do that rate analysis. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Very good, Jimmy. Thank you. Okay, uh, that takes care of finance. Now we go on to the subcommittee, environmental subcommittee. Environmental subcommittee. I had a question, I had a question on finance. Yeah, John, yeah, go ahead. Rob, Rob, I heard you say ballots being mailed. I was under the impression this was a protest hearing and not an assessment. Are you? Are you uh, I'm sorry, uh, not, not ballots, notices will be mailed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, environmental, environmental subcommittee. Yeah, the environmental subcommittee has nothing to report. We've not All right. Met. All right, good. Okay, how about engineering? Engineering has nothing to report at this time. Okay, good. Okay, that takes care of the subcommittees. Now, the next thing on the agenda is kind of tough for me. It's the... Uh, it's the MOU between Cayucas and uh, Morro Bay. And we have two drafts, and they're hard for me to put side by side, but um, we're here to compare them. And as you say, Rob, we're going to have, the city is going to have a meeting, a uh, joint and powers uh, meeting tomorrow. And so is this, and this is on the agenda. So this is, uh, this is a hot ticket, huh? Yes, this is the second thing on the agenda for tomorrow night. So um, uh, the city council um, reviewed this item at their last meeting and, um, or excuse me, the meeting before last, the last meeting in, in February, and basically has, have given direction for, um, to move forward with the city's drafted um, MOU. Um, subsequent to your last meeting, um, we received a um, um, MOU from the Cayuca Sanitary District. And since you didn't get a chance to review that at your last meeting, that's why I'm including this, so that we're basically getting this, as much information out to the public as possible. So the city has their version of what the language in the MOU um, says. Um, the Cayuca has their version, and they are um, different. Um, in quite a few respects. So um, the Morro Bay uh, sets the tone and um, at least in this first phase would have Morro Bay acting as the project manager and Cayucas as the customer. And this, this MOU is what was called at one meeting the MOU for now um, um, to get us through the um, um, facilities master planning and environmental review. And I, I want to note that um, um, in a conversation with Mr. D. Dotti, he brought up this, uh, that a number after now therefore number two um, components of the MOU, the last two, um, and I'll paraphrase this and John can correct me if I'm wrong, it talks about preparation of an RFP, but it's actually preparation and execution of those, um, those documents, because we want to be able to do that work also under this MOU. Just the preparation of the MOU, do, or the, of the RFP, doesn't really get us anywhere. Yeah, I saw that. Seven and eight uh, bullets are not uh, uh, on the Cayucas uh, MOU. Right, and, and to clarify on that, um, preparing the RFPs selecting the consultants, getting the work done on the facility master plan, 
the environmental is going to be a little bit of a lag on that because we need to know what's in the facility master plan to be able to move forward. So there's going to be a gray area as the environmental review stage gets into gear, um, how long uh, this MOU will, will uh, still be in effect at that point. Uh, because it'll, there's the larger question of how project management will work in the long run and so forth, which will all have to be resolved during the life of this MOU, uh, toward the end of the MOU. The point of the MOU is just to keep the ball rolling for right now, pretty much. What, what bothers me quite a bit is I, I, if I was in your shoes, I would be very uh, nervous about proceeding with any design criteria of the new project unless this was put to bed. And it seems to me you need to know. Uh, is Cayucas participating? And, in, and if they are, how, in what manner? Or, or uh, um, in what form or authority are they participating? And it seems to me that that's critical for you to proceed in a, in a timely manner. Or as an alternative, we still have to proceed. We, we only have a limited amount of time yeah. to proceed. Um, and um, council could give staff direction to proceed with issuance of an RFP um, prior to um, a executed MOU um, with the city as lead on that and um, 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 as Cayucas has a chance to um, digest the meanings of that, um, we could amend that um, um, RFP. Okay, well, I propose then what we do is go through the Cayucas um, MOU page by page and see if anyone has any comments and then we'll come back to the Morro Bay MOU and page by page for any comments and then uh, we will ask for staff's uh, a summation. Is that is that acceptable to you, Rob? Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. I have a suggestion. Yeah. I like suggestions. Since the city MOU is so modified, we could go through the cities and, and we could point out what CSD deleted. Well, this won't and take, it won't take too long, Valerie. Well, I want to well, see. I guess what I'm saying is that what uh, CSD did is they, they deleted a lot from, from the city. They condensed everything down and they moved a few things to a couple of two different places in the MOU from where the city had it. But um, okay. Anyway, that's just my thought. Thank you, um, Rob. Can can you give us a, a breakdown of what the differences is, are between the two? Uh, just a bullet point of what I, I think. Basically, it goes down to really one concept: um, is that we would continue to operate under our kind of existing operational agreement where we would continue to meet as a joint body, decisions would be made as a joint body, um, both would be overseeing the project, um, it would be business as usual is uh, the gist of what I get out of the, uh, their ver version of the MOU. So Cayucas doesn't want to be a customer, they want to be part of it, is that? Is at, that what, at this yes. point, that's what, that what I get from you, their from comments. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I am um, well oh. no let's let let's let's cool our jets a little bit. <laughs> let's go through page one of the Cayucas um, um, MOU and let's start with uh, uh, Richard. Thank you. Um, I took a couple of notes and it's almost like a overview before we kind of get into the meat of it. Well, and I got it listed, and I will pass out this. Uh, this well, to if you can make it brief, because this is it, it is brief. It's six right. points, and uh, basically, the Cayuca Sanitary District. Just it, address the first page, so as we can go this through this, not too well, uh, detailed. Before we want to go through this incrementally as okay. we go. Well, okay? before we even get to step one, okay, we have. The Cayuca Sanitary District and the City of Morro Bay have some basic differing goals based on self-interest and are not compatible. 
and I'll just read out uh, uh, just six sentences. Number one, the CSD has always wanted to remain at the current plant and has expressed a strong negative views regarding Morro Bay's actions that lead to the dis decision to move it inland. Number two, when it was clear that the plant would be moved, they pushed for the CMC alternative and the investigation of that alternative has cost Morro Bay a great deal of money and caused significant delays. Morro Bay has already indicated at that time a preference for a site much closer to town. Number three, delay gives CSD what they appear to want, that is to stay at the current site for as long as possible. And that is proved by a study that they funded and that was their first alternative. Number four, delay also means continual discharge of less than secondary treated effluent into the ocean, which impacts Morro Bay much more than Cayucas. Number five, the CSD has, over the years, consistently opposed significant reclamation capacity, cap capabilities for the new plant, and our water supply situations are very different. Morro Bay needs reclaimed water due to the unreliability of our drinking water sources, and Cayucas has five independent water sources if you count their cemetery district. And number six, even the content of the two proposed MOUs demonstrates a different goal of these two agencies. Now, as a field engineer, this is what I was trained in, one of the things that comes, in, comes about with these kind of projects is as we know, as we do the groundwork, as the work is done in the field, there's always situations where you have an as-built and you need a decision maker to make a decision. If we are gonna be in partners with uh, the CSD, these decisions can't be made at the spot and they will just be delayed upon delays. And I am really strongly suggest that we look at Cayucas as a customer only, just like we do, just like we'll do state parks. And also, in addition, it is imperative, since we're the lead agencies, all fluid measuring devices that are uh, in the collection system should be under the jurisdiction of Morro Bay not Cayucas. And currently, Cayucas is in charge of lift station five, where we have to have a trust relationship regarding their flows. And I would say trust but verify, and that, that should be encompassed in our uh, jurisdiction with our staff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Barbara. All right, we're on the Cayucas. Yeah, we're on the Cayucas. I'll, I was going to start with page one, but it sounds like we're, we're encompassing the entire thing. So just go ahead and, and uh, and tell us what you think. Okay. Um, I agree with you, Bill. It's very difficult to review this, and, and I would also propose the next time that we put this in word tracking mode or something more representative of the uh, 21st century so that we could review it once. I'm concerned if we try to review both, we're going to be going back and forth repeating the same yeah. discussion. And again, um, some of these are really business issues, this deletion of all these whereas paragraphs as far as a contractual. So you would get guidance from your counsel on that. Uh, the biggest thing I see is the deletion of the phrase with uh, the requirement to pay for the previous costs incurred on the studies uh, to date. So um, I would you know, defer to who, whoever's negotiating this as to how important some of these items are, the deletion of these bullets. Yeah. But, but that's just at a general level, but it's very difficult to review in this It manner. is hard. It is very hard. I'm used to, in my format, of where you take two documents, you, do, you strike throughs and underlines. And, stuff and you like see that, who you made know, the changes, and you can insert colors, comments. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. Ginny. Just a, just a point. This was a document that was presented to us by the Cayuca Sanitary District. We, we, did, we didn't uh, we edit this uh, in-house. Otherwise, you'd see uh, strike-throughs and line-outs like you do in the um, um, RFP. Okay, I, I have nothing to add. I think um, Barbara has pretty much covered what I had. My concern was especially with the previous costs. Steve? 
Yeah, a, t a few quick things in seeing it. And you're right, Rob. I think their feeling is to be a partner, not a customer of the city. And I'm not going to get into whether it's better th them as a customer or whether them as a partner. But if they wish to be a partner, the two things I uh, bothered me was the fact they didn't want to go back to soft costs back to 2013. If you're a true partner, you'd be covering those costs. And the second big, and this is a very big one too, is they don't want to cover any of Morrill Bay's staff time, yeah. which is going to be quite extensive over the next sure. five or six years throughout this process. Yeah. So the, the problem I have, I, I look at this document and I don't agree with it, but I understand it. What they're trying to do is cut the best deal they can for their rate payers in their, um, sure. in their area. Unfortunately, being a city rate payer, and mainly we're here for that purpose, that is the biggest problem that bothers me with this aspect. It did bring the light, and I'll bring it up when we get over to the Morro Bay MOU. It did open my eyes to a few things about how Morro Bay approached the MOU, and I'll bring that up when we yeah. get to the next part. Me but th those are the main things I saw in their MOU that I had concerns with. Okay, that's good. Well, yeah, with these um, deletions and edits that Cayucas did, um, is it anything that's missing now that was important to you originally? Who authored the original MOU that Cayucas Morro Bay presented? It was a group effort. I was the primary author, um, ran it through our legal counsel. Bruce had some input into it. Uh, Rick Sauerwein of our staff. So it was our, a staff effort uh, with our legal counsel's input. Um, and then we forwarded that to Cayucas for their review and, so and with, signature. With it, their it version, in, which is really toned down, obviously, is there anything missing that, uh, that would give you guys heartburn that you wanted in there? Um, basically, the, the, um, the flavor of Morro Bay is the lead agency, they're a customer, and that uh, they struck the soft cost. We view that they all uh, lead the project to where it is today, um, we would reimburse each other for each other's soft costs and to have that included. Valerie. Um, are we, we're not, are we at the point? No, we're just talking about just Cayucas now. We'll just, uh, yeah, okay, we're, we're just warming up. I agree, I agree that uh, CSD um, does not, is not agreeing to the city take over the, uh, uh, take over the operation of the plant and the CSD as a customer. Um, there also be, appears to be a disagreement as to the authority of the GPA and uh, what it requires in regards to decisions uh, and decision making. Uh, if you see CSD, <clears throat> there whereas number five versus Morro Bay, there whereas number six, um, the community service district is saying that the JPA does specify um, that written approval and approvals need to be both parties, whereas um, the Morro Bay number six, uh, in terms of what they're saying the JPA uh, covers, is basically saying it's not clear at this point what the JPA would cover for the future. So there, there appears to be a, a, a pretty good difference there. Um, there's a number of things that were deleted under roles and responsibility. Again, the ownership, and there was also a deletion of discussion of design build, which is what the city is striving for. And there was also uh, the deletion of the role of the city engineer um, in regards to coordinating a lot of the efforts. There's et cetera, et cetera. There's just a whole number of things, but those seem to be some fairly important issues. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is if it's a joint effort, that means two parties are going to have to agree on everything that is done for design, build. So, so the way the existing agreement works between the two bodies is um, their motions have to mirror each other for anything to move forward. Is that uh, uh, kind of in a nutshell how, how it works? So they sit, uh, they don't sit as a 10 person board when they meet together. There are two separate boards meeting in the same room at the same time. So there's no... Morro Bay and then... Cayucas. are two separate. Yeah, so two, when they meet 
like tomorrow night, it's two separate boards meeting in the same room at the same time. So if they want to do anything together, their votes have to mirror each other for that item to um, be um, um, approved by both by both bodies. That's what they're saying under their para paragraph 14 of the JPA. That's what they're pointing okay. out. Before so, that, we, <clears throat> so that means that if there's not an agreement, then this thing gets drug out longer and longer. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that that's, what happens? That's the problem. If, 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 if the Morro Bay City Council doesn't choose to do something else. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Before I give John a crack at it, I'm, I got just a couple things on the Cayucas MOU on uh, page 2, 3B. It says each party shall be responsible for the payment and costs of their ex respective staff. I think that's totally unacceptable. And I don't think you can buy that. And then 3E, the ultimate operation and ownership of the facilities is beyond the scope of this MOU. I don't think that that I don't think you can buy that either. I think that that has to be uh, uh, um, that is unacceptable. John, are you there? I'm here. <clears throat> Have you got any comments on the Cayucas MOU before we get to the uh, the Morro Bay MOU? We're going to go to that next, and we're going to give that a thorough massaging. But uh, right now, we're just talking about the Cayucas MOU. Uh, no, no, I don't think I have anything to add that's uh, not already been said. Okay. Then I'm ready to go on to sure. uh, the uh, MOU that the yes, Valerie. John, is did you see any reason for why they would have wanted to to delete um, preparation and circulation of the initial study from the um, components of the new uh, under number two? Why why they took that out? I I'm, I don't Just, understand why they would take that out other than. We have to come to another agreement before we um, do that. Okay, now we're to the MOU draft by Morrill Bay that they propose to the joint uh, 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 group. And uh, let's start with the front page and let's start with Dale instead of. Richard. I have nothing right front now. Front page. Front page, you can go, okay. How about you, Valerie? Well, it's probably everybody's noticed that on the front page, um, they deleted uh, the second whereas, and they deleted the fifth whereas. Well, let's... let's, one, let's well, one, and, one and three are the same, but what... Five does is it lays out what the intent of the Morrill Bay community, what our what our goals are. Let's um, approach this that Morrill Bay City Council is going to take this as their <clears throat> as their document and just review that from a council perspective as to what you would change or add or or delete. As a council member, this MOU, as you present it to the public and to uh, Cayucas, is there anything on page one that you would change as a council member? And maybe, maybe just a little preamble. This has already gone to council. Um, they have not made significant uh, changes. changes to it. Um, uh, they are in agreement with the um, words. Uh, 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 words and with more importantly, probably than the words, the intent. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe one question. I noticed that the CSD used the term parties when they're talking because they see it as a, a joint project. And I'm wondering if somehow uh, I believe that CSD was part of the development of the goal setting. This that would be the fifth whereas. So is, are we being exclusionary by not saying that Morro Bay and CSD, or did they not agree to all of the goals and objectives here? They, they, did delete they were not party to any goal setting. Um, okay. they, they reviewed the material, but they didn't provide any input. And I, I know our council has asked okay. for them to um, state their goals so that we can include them in an MOU. But um, 
Because um, I know that we had the working sessions and every, <clears throat> people gave input. I don't know if anybody from you know, CSD did anything. Not that I, not that was identified as a CSD board member or actually a member of the Cayucas community um, that provided input. Wait, wait, you've done, Valerie? Are you happy? I'm done with the first page. Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. All right. Okay, John. I mean, Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. I noticed that um, Cayuca obviously had no problem with our percent splits of 72-28. I think we discussed this a little bit last time, but do we actually want to lock into a number or make it say that's current and subject to some sort of adjustment? Do we want to kind of some flexibility there? That's probably a good idea. Is I know this is short term, but nonetheless, something could happen and might work in our favor and be nice to have that in here. Yeah. I think we're pretty close on the 7228 based on um, MWH's analysis during the last project, but it might be good or um, actual flows uh, capacities as uh, determined through the facilities master plan. Steve? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to, I hate to say it, Bill, like I kind of talk into the whole document because to do it page by page, I'm talking more of the tenor of the entire thing, not necessarily which line just cross out on a given page. Okay, let and, it rip. Yeah, okay, good deal. Thank you. Um, and, it, and it came to light for me when I was reading the Cayuca CSD's uh, MOU is the fact if it's the political will of the city council to have them as a customer and we be a purveyor, I see a structure similar to how the CCWA and the city of Morrill Bay are set up where CCWA is the owner, they're a purveyor to the city of Morrill Bay. Morrill Bay pays a flat fee for all capital recovery costs of the CCWA and then turns around and pays another cost for the operation and maintenance as you, or the operational costs of providing and they entitle the city to a certain amount of something. It seems to me the MOU should be structured more in that format if the intent is no longer to be partners and to be a client-server kind of a relationship. And if that is indeed the case, maybe the city wouldn't be in its rights to say, hey, let's, you're, not, you're gonna have to go back and cover costs back to January 2013. In reality, what would happen is you'd cover all costs from the beginning to, and then you tie down a fee and a capital recovery cost and move forward. So they may not be funding it up front, but it would be more in that format. Yeah, that, that would be another alternative. We talked about that was um, that I think that would be acceptable to the city council is um, so either they're paying for some of the upfront costs, but it's going to be reflected in their future rates. They may have a lower uh, because they're going to be paying some upfront costs. Yeah, and if they're reimbursing upfront for those capital recovery costs, I can agree with that. But I, I think if you're going to be the purveyor, then be the purveyor. Yeah. And your MOU should read in that format. Don't kind of waffle a little, a little yeah. like they're still partners if you're not allowing them to be partners. I guess that's the tenor of the whole MOU that I would see. If you're going to go the direction of, uh, you know, a purveyor and a customer, then I try to work the MOU into that path. Okay. Thank you. And I agree uh, totally. I think that I think that's a very important point, and I think that would that would that would be um, reason enough to maybe uh, massage this document a little bit to reflect that. Anyway, before we get there, Jenny, you got something to say? I was just going to say that I thought that this um, the Morrill Bay MOU was very well written, and. Actually, I have um, very few comments on it, but again, the assumption would be, as it's written, that Morro Bay and Cayucas are partners. And, and if you made that change on page two, where you added um, preparation and execution of the RFP, I think that's fine. Barbara. Uh, thanks. Uh, same comments as Ginny. Um, it's, it's very well done 
as it stands right now, reflecting the tone of an equal partnership. Uh, Rob, the only question I had was on the termination date in Section 5, the option of the earliest of the June 30th, 2016. While I think that's good maybe to have an out, I, I would also make the comment that maybe you get a year into this and then you have to renegotiate it. So I'm, I'm not sure what the rationale was for that, but I defer to your judgment there. That's uh, the last page, Section 5. I think the idea was that that gets us through the preliminary studies, and uh, we, we talk about it again um, at that point. Okay, thank you. Richard. I, uh, I agree with, uh, with Steve. Regarding any memorandum with Cayucas, it should be crystal clear that we're the lead agency, they're going to be a customer, and it should be written as such. Some of the issues that I uh, also want to bring up in the first page, it talks about uh, referencing the first page where the fifth whereas is, and it talks about Title 22 requirements and reclaimed water, and also combining that with the recent letter that we just got with the regional board. Uh, it's my understanding that LAFCO and the Cayuca Sanitary District have to come to some kind of an agreement that they have uh, either creating another district for the, well, what to do with the water, the reclaimed water, or create a community service district in Cayucas. And all these, once again, all these things that if we lace in there are going to delay us from the project and that's why I think it's it's like this has been just so people know this has been going on since 2003 that I know okay 2003 I was doing a flow study at Cayuca so it's not something that is like oh, okay new it should be very simple we in Morro Bay are taking all the risk of having that sewage going through our North Morro Bay town it took Cayucas uh, 2003 and 2014, 11 years to f just address an H2S issue. Uh, and it wasn't until a school was put in near there that they did. So based on history and past experience, I think that we need to get a move on it in Morro Bay and, make, and just make a, basically figure out what it's going to cost per dollar to, to treat that. Uh, their sewage thanks so thank you uh, back to Dale uh, Dale and Valerie especially I I apologize it morphed as it went around the corner so I'm going to give you guys another crack at it uh, before we uh, move on to John and maybe other things well uh, you know I agree with Richard and Steve that we need to lay it out that that they're a customer and that Morro Bay is a lead and just do something to that effect so there's no misinterpretation of what their role is or what they have to do so we don't stall this any longer so we can get a jump on it. Okay, Valerie, you're on oh. for the entire document. No, that's okay. I was just looking at um, page two, and it's on page two where um, the CSD under the third whereas um, no. Yes, <clears throat> the third whereas uh, eliminates the city as um, the owner operator and um, is also um, their first whereas. I don't know, wait a minute. Yeah. What page are you on, Valerie? Oh, uh, page two of the page city's, two. yeah, and the city, uh, the city's uh, first whereas on page one states that the existing JPA does not consider outline or guide the CMB and CSD and their relationship, obligations, responsibilities, et cetera. And I think that what the CSD is saying is that basically no actions, no relocation, reconstruction, alteration, yada, yada, or replacement of any portion of this. Uh, would it would occur without written approval between both parties so there's and um, and so that's they don't agree with I don't think that's what we're, their their issue is I don't think they agree with that statement the first whereas on that page the city's 
Um, I believe that some of the things that are on this page, on page two, actually show up. They were deleted here and show up later on um, in other places. Um, I believe uh, they, oh, oh, it's also here. It's the uh, fourth whereas, the, for, the city's fourth whereas is that, um, no, that's not the one. That's it for now. Okay. Oh, uh, there is one more thing. All that, right. That they okay. deleted. It's under description of the project. Um, and it has to do with uh, under uh, number two, treated wastewater options, treated wastewater to points of discharge into the waters of the state or for beneficial reuse within legally authorized areas. I believe that was deleted. No, no, wait a minute. Now, where are you? You're on, oh, you're on page I'm under, two. Page two under and description. number two. Of, yeah, on so the they, now so there number one I. Number one I. Uh, okay. Actually, I'm under okay. number one. Okay. Yeah, I, I. Okay, got it. Uh, the, the, I think they were deleted reuse within legally authorized areas. And, yes, they and did. And then they also deleted conveyance infrastructure facilities may be located within existing or future right away. Yeah, Cayucas, Cayucas deleted that, changed I, that. Yeah, yeah. CSD did. And I'm not sure why they would have. I guess they just figured. It I was thought Cayucas's wording there was a was, non sequitur. Was was maybe a, a little bit different and maybe better. So yeah. um, they expanded maybe on yeah. legally authorized areas to say um, effluent injection wells to aid aquifer right. recharge and subsidence control. Not sure that there's subsidence, but um, and prevent saltwater intrusion or for beneficial reuse. What page is that? Um, this is on um, page, they're not numbered in the Cayucas. Oh, that's, that's the Cayucas MOU. Oh. And it's oh, yeah. uh, under number one. Number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One double I in the Cayucas MOU. Right. But that sounded yes. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They say the same thing. In different words, okay. legally authorized uh, areas, or um, they specified some specific areas. Yours was um, more general. Ours are more general. Yeah. Ours would allow for uh, direct potable reuse sometime in the the future. You know, when we put on our dune suits and. Uh, uh, um, I guess I would have to agree too. I, I like the way they they wrote. Um, uh, okay. If we do have theirs, I would suggest that we would add, um, add I guess, or for, or for any uh, legally authorized beneficial reuse. Yeah, and then put a tailor for for yeah. the for the uh, yeah. scooper. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Valerie? You got some more? Not on that page. Okay. Try the next page. On the next page. I think uh, um, Vice Chair Woodson is uh, now looking at the entire document rather yeah. than yeah, we're going through page by we're, we're, What oh. we're doing is Steve, Steve convin hijacked. convinced me and <laughs> twisted my Are arm. And, okay. and so if there's any, any comments anywhere in the document, just go ahead and let her rip. Um, I guess what, in terms of the Morrow Bay uh, components of the new uh, WRF under number two, CSD added um, the, the, uh, the, the importance of starting to work on getting, um, you know, getting the state revolving funds, you know, applying or you know, like going, going after money, in other words, trying to, trying to get money. They added that to the list of things that need to be done. And, but they did delete the preparation and circulation of the initial study. Yeah, yeah, and we know that. I, um, under uh, roles and responsibilities, they deleted C, and that's the, the public works director in, engineer with uh, the city of Morro Bay planning, yet, et cetera. Um, they, just, they deleted that, that ro those roles, and um, general manage, then the role of the general manager, see, uh, let's see. 
so that you'll consult with the general manager, but they they completely struck that paragraph from from your MOU. My only comment on that, Rob, is I think that you should preserve or maybe uh, retain the Honaker uh, project manager. I think that that's all encompassing, and I notice in the next document that we're going to review, and in, in this one. Uh, the project manager is not you, it's, it's others, and it could be even a consultant. So I, I don't know who, I haven't seen a table or, uh, or um, uh, a uh, staffing Org tree. chart. Org chart, thank you. Uh, but I think, you know, you, you should retain that uh, very generalist uh, title, uh, personally. So it's basically all the work that you would do for getting the FMP rolling, the environmental document, uh, preliminary property acquisition. They want to be consulted all, all along the way. It's basically, that's why they struck it. I would think. Yes, I believe so. And then uh, they struck the next paragraph uh, under roles and responsibility, D. Um, The uh, city and the CSD uh, and shall provide policy direction, meet quarterly uh, to, make, to ensure that CSD's concerns are heard, um, and then prior to uh, any final decisions by the city. And um, And then there's they also this, and also in there the the council board of directors meetings related to this MOU shall be separate and distinct meetings from the existing uh, JPA. Nothing in this section prevents the new meeting from occurring on the same day. So um, basically, that whole paragraph was struck. They deleted. Oh, here we go again. The ultimate uh, operation and ownership of this uh, facility will be the uh, CMB and that CSD will be a customer. They deleted um, the parties of the, to this MOU with the goal of achieving an agreement executed on behalf of both parties prior to the execution of construction or design build contract by C CMB. Um, I believe they discussed, they deleted that for, for the new water reclamation facility. Um, but I, I believe it's this, the execution of, I believe what the city is, is striving for is a design build alter method. I think to meet our timeline, that's yes. really. But that was, I believe that was. Alternative delayed. delivery is um, probably the, the, maybe the only way to get there. Yeah. And. Um, that's all I have on that page. Um, I don't know if you want me to go to the next page. Um, they did two things under termination of this MOU. They deleted the June 30th, 2016 date, and they added, uh, uh, if somebody, I believe what they're doing here, if somebody wants to step out of the, um, um, the this particular uh, agreement that they added a 60-day uh, written notification process. They did. They certainly did. Mutual agreement. Yeah. <clears throat> That's primarily what I saw. Do you have any further questions? Do you have any further questions? No. I um, it, it it's it sounds like we have two different types of MOUs here with two different goals and objectives, and the roles and responsibilities are different between the, uh, what, the what the city is um, uh, willing to, t you know, what the, city, what the city is proposing and what CSD wants to participate in. That's correct. Yeah. So, then, Paul? and then tomorrow, I guess you'll discuss that more? Yes, both okay. bodies will. Right. Paul, have you got something to add? I was just going to ask what she was asking about tomorrow's meeting. Will there be some sort of resolution by tomorrow, hopefully? Or is this going to drag on? Ideally, um, we would come out of that meeting with a direction to maybe make some minor modifications to 
um, an MOU and both parties would sign it. Um, that would be very optimistic. If, uh, but it's a goal. Yeah. Yes, and it is a goal. And that's what you're going to strive to do. That's what we're going to strive to do. Sure. I have one quick question. Um, Rob, uh, in the, as we jump into the later thing, the RFP, it talks about a March 16th date to put it out. Are you going to move ahead with that regardless of whether you get this MOU put in place or not? It depends how things go tomorrow, but uh, um, if it looks like we're, there's no resolution even to put out the MOU, I will be asking our council to give me direction to um, put out a city RFP. One other thing I wanted to clarify and when I spoke earlier, and that's not the fact of whether I'm pushing either for us to be a purveyor or to be a partner with the CSD. I just feel if it's the political will of this city to be a purveyor, then the MOU should match accordingly. Thank, Thank you. you. That's right. Okay, before we give John a crack at this, I'll, I just want to uh, kind of synopsize my thoughts on the MOU. And there's, I think I'm echoing uh, what I've heard here. And first of all, I really appreciate you guys looking so thoroughly into this. This is a very important document, and and I appreciate your thoughts and. Um, and, and, and your time and effort. So my first comment is on the first page, and it's the, it's the fourth whereas, where it's the 70 28%, and I'm just echoing Richard on, we better be sure of that and how you're going to address it, especially under, uh, uh, if indeed, as Richard states, we are trusting their meters we should be very sure of the 7228. And the just a little clarification on the 7228. It's not a flow-based number. It's their ownership of capacity in the facility. So it's what we're designing for. So they're going to have to state what they want capacity-wise um, for a future plant. They're going to give us a um, XMGD plant uh, yeah. that they need or an X thousand gallon per day plant. Um, so costs for this capital improvement will be based on um, your capacity in the new facility. So um, it, we, we won't be looking at flow meters for that. If you do it like my analogy in the electric industry where you have capacity and then uh, actual energy, it's the same principle. Yes. Yeah, okay. And the second thing that, that I, I'm, I am echoing, Steve, is that on 4A on page 3, where you're asking uh, a Cayucas to uh, share in the expenses, uh, uh, and then on the other hand, you want them to be a customer. I think you, you could delete that and, and just say, you're just a customer here, uh, not just, you are our primary wholesale customer, and, and uh, we will take care of all of these elements of, of the project, including the financing and costs, and we will bill you. And then the third thing is that, uh, I think Valerie touched on it very well, is the termination of the MOU and um, the June 16, 2016 criteria. I, I assume the existing MOU it has no end, and there's no way that you can, and, and it includes the project as, as part of the existing MOU, and I don't know the legalities, and I think that you have to go further, but I would think that you would need to get this thing put to bed. Uh, I think their attorney's opinion is um, Morro Bay and Cayucas are tied together forever. Yeah. Um, we're chained together, <laughs> yeah, and we, can net, we cannot break that chain um, that's no matter what. Too. No, yeah. that's I don't think our city attorney has that same opinion. And so I think it's going to get to the, the clash of the giants. And so I, but I think it has to be resolved, and it just cannot be one of these things that is not addressed. And those are my only comments. Hey, John, are you there still? <laughs> uh, do you have anything to say? I'm here. Everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Let her rip. Uh, I would just 
add on, and Rob mentioned it earlier, I would just like to make sure that uh, on part two where it talks about uh, potential costs, that, he, as he said, execution is also covered. The way when I read it, it seemed like it was a lot of preparation work, not necessarily the actual deliverables. And then also uh, another bullet, just because there is some uncertainty uh, with this type of work as to what needs to be um, uh, done, that there's, that there's a bullet that says something like, any other costs related to preliminary development of a new water reclamation facility and that just that just reiterates the the, uh, the MOU and that any other any other costs that may be necessary to get uh, 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 work done are are also covered as well. And and you're not having the CSD saying, well, it's not in the uh, section two, so we're not paying for it. And then just just uh, as some comments, I do I do appreciate staff putting this together. Uh, I I think the the JPA is a model that's, that's not going to work moving forward. And if uh, this needs to be accomplished in six years, then definitely a more streamlined um, agreement in place how decisions are made and the project is, is uh, uh, moved forward. And I think City's MOU does give, addresses that and then does give the CSD uh, the ability to provide some input um, with the, with uh, section four, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Rob, you want you want you want. Is this the last word? Yeah, no, it's not the last word. But um, I just wanted to make one comment. For sure. The goal tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, it seems like it just boils down to whether they're going to be a partner or a customer, right? So if you could get that cleared away right up front, they might be a very short meeting, or it, it could be a little longer and very productive, and, and I think you've got both versions now. Right. Right? Yes. So we will have agreement where, where we stand and... Yes, and uh, I'll offer a suggestion and see if this board would maybe like to make that motion. Okay. I can take your comments incorporate them into a red line document that can be distributed to, to the council and the board um, for their consideration as an alternative yeah. to um, um, the MOUs as, because they're already in the JPA staff report. Mm -hmm. So uh, this would need to be distributed late. That so would be helpful. Yeah, I think, it, I think it would be, I think you. Would it be helpful to you, I guess, huh? Yeah, I think it would be helpful for the process, too, okay, um, to provide, um, I would take the city's MOU, because that's the direction I've received, that's cool. and make we the understand. modifications to that, and um, incorporate your comments into that, and maybe some alternative language, because I've heard uh, both sides, I've heard, you know, kind of Steve's perspective, and I think Dale echoed that, is um, take them out of paying anything up front, make them a customer, it gets rolled into their ultimate rates. That's it. Um, or the other perspective that I heard discussed is keep it as written where they're paying upfront costs, but maybe there needs to be um, some language in there as to how their ultimate rate gets adjusted if they do pay upfront costs. So um, I like the former. You like the former? <laughs> and I, I would be happy to do that if that's the consensus of, of the committee. Well, uh, then, uh, do you need a motion? Well, I think we, we need, there's some we public here that would like to comment at uh, okay. this All right. point. We could take public okay, comment. Okay, public comment. Well, Barbara, do you have something you want to state beforehand? Uh, yes. Well, I had a comment on that. And once again, it's what's driving, you know, the horse or the cart. If the, the city came up with this partnership arrangement initially, the city council, and that's what they want, then I would say you would start with that. You would modify it to include all the comments that the city needs to pursue this partnership as a minimum. And if that doesn't get approved tomorrow, then you immediately go to plan B, which is the client server purveyor customer. But, but I think somebody has to make that decision as to what's going to be the best. This city agreement is kind of a hybrid. Um, yes. it's, uh, there, are, there are partner in the first part mm -hmm. of it with the city retaining all control. You got it. Um, maybe it's because I wrote it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
and then they become a customer later on. Mm -hmm. um, I think perhaps it would be clearer. Um, and we can, when we redline this, we can leave it as, a, as an optional item in there um, and let the, the council see both points of view if that's what this committee wants to do. Barbara, are you done? We were going to go to public comment, but you're welcome to keep on going if you want. Uh, no, I just want to make sure I was clear. I yeah. think if this was the direction you were given, Rob, then you want to pursue that, and you just, you know, we, we're not going to go back and forth with CSD. This is the minimal amount of terms we can accept. If you can't accept that, we're going to pursue another arrangement. Uh, Bill, I, I have yeah. one more, yeah. more okay. item. Let her I, I just noticed that on page three of the city's uh, MOU uh, 4A, makes reference back to January 8, 2013, and I believe that was supposed to be the day the Coastal Commission struck the gavel. Right. It wasn't then on January 10th. I noticed past resolutions you used that eighth date. The 10th is when Ten. they actually met. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> and, and there's some typos in there. You might have your best spell check, spell check pushed, button pushed. Okay, dear public. <laughs> Identify yourself, please. Um, Marla Jo Bruton Sadowski, North Morro Bay. And I, first, I want to commend you. Um, all of you obviously put a lot of time and attention into this. And on behalf of the citizens of Morro Bay, if I can be so bold, we, we really appreciate the work you're doing. I have a question, and it, it may be totally like weird, <laughs> but um, since the CSD has been telling us, well, we go do the uh, um, investigate CMC, and we investigate, you know, we do all this work, and that they're doing their own thing over here. How do we know that? If even if they do become, say that they're going to be a partner, how do we know that they're com that that we would have a commitment to that so that we don't start designing a plant, including them as a partner, and then they throw a hatchet in and go, well, you know, we're going to make our own little plant or we're going to go to another community. Um, I just, it's it's like they're. They're just all over the place and nowhere at the same time. So um, has anyone thought about that? Because they seem to be so um, elusive. We, we know it's a very difficult, it's a conundrum. And yeah. it's something that we have to, to deal with. I'm sure Rob could, could, uh, could uh, wax on this more eloquent than I. But all I'm telling you is that all pressures are pushed towards putting Cayucas and Morro Bay together in bed to the, for this facility. Well, yeah. one thing I will say is we just got this letter from the Regional Water Quality mm -hmm. Control Board that it, says there's going to be penalties after 2021. Right. I think Cayucas is going to find themselves in a very tight spot since Morro Bay has made the initiative to move forward on it over the last you know year and a half, two years. Um, for them to try and come up with a plant placement that the Coastal Commission is going to approve and try and get it implemented. Because I, as I'm I read not... that letter, Rob, and correct me if I'm wrong, both, both the district and the city are on the hook. It said a mandatory minimum, uh, what are they, penalties are going to happen in 2021. That's the way I read that letter. So. That's, that's the way, yeah. So, so I, I think you're going to find, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I think you're going to find that they, they are they are in a position they would have to come up with something very very quickly to try and usurp it and i think it would fall out before we truly get into the full design phase where the money differences and costs to design a larger all facility. outside influences are pushing towards us working together to have a facility that will serve both communities. Okay, so you're, you're speaking about the Regional Water Board, yeah. and CCC, the state, the and state. the county, okay. and, uh, and all the other agencies. And you may want to add on that, I don't know, but it, it, it looks like everybody is pushing us together. Okay, that's good to hear. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
No. Rod, did you want to add to that? <clears throat> um, I don't think I have anything else to add other than there will be an ultimate agreement. I mean, this, this MOU was not to resolve all the, um, everything in the world um, because um, there was no way that we were going, ever going to agree to that in short term. Um, um, so the, the intent was to um, have an MOU that gets us through facility master planning before we start encouraging huge costs. Um, um, that was the intent, and then at some point, you know, if Cayucas is a customer, we're going to have an agreement where they pledge their rates for the next 30 years to pay back, because nobody's going to loan us any money unless we um, both pledge our rates to pay back that uh, loan. And we're proceeding with the design that's going to be coupled with Cayucas, and the capacity of the plant's going to be such that we can handle the, the effluent from Cayucas. That's the goal, yes. Okay. Whew. Okay, I think we got through the MOU, and that gets us to new business. Um, and is there a motion? Do, do, oh, do we need a motion? Uh, we I'm don't sorry. need one, uh, but think it, we, if you did want to make a motion okay. to clarify oh, yeah, well, your, your position. Like Barbara's got a motion. Do you have a, oh, do oh, you have one, Richard? Yeah, I, okay, I, well, I have a motion. I'd like I'd like to I'd like to make the motion that um, Morro Bay staff draft a simple customer purveyor relationship document to present to the JPA and City Council tomorrow. That that reflects this discussion today by our our uh, committee and the thoughts per that, that we came forward that would include that? Um, yeah, I, I, the motion, I want to make it clear that I think that we, I'm making the motion that we tr treat Cayucas as a customer. And the MOU the, M, the MOU reflect that clearly. And um, that keeps it simple. All right. And um, can I just comment on a little bit? Well, no, let, let's just let that motion sit and then we'll go. Well, and it does reflect the discussion that we've had here this afternoon. Uh, is there a second? I, do I hear a second? I'll second, second it. Okay. I don't now know who we got have... it. I don't know who we needed for the minutes who, who was. Uh... Uh, Dale got it, I think. <laughs> yeah. he, he stood up and waved, so he. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we do have an opportunity for discussion before we say yay or nay. And Richard, if you want to make a couple comments, let her, let just let us go ahead and have them. Okay. Cayuca Sanitary is a special district under LAFCO, and they are a 501c4. They're able to lobby, unlike our city. That's my understanding. If we going if we're going to a ne negotiate and it's a business negotiation because yes. let's make it clear this yes. is what it is let's take a look at Cayucas's goals are very different than ours and our their situations is very different what are their options their options are building their own plant with 2000 some odd people maybe making a joint powers agreement with Cambria or somebody from uh, Nascimento, or being a customer with Morro Bay. The infrastructure is there. We're in a strong negotiation position right now as a city. When the original JPA was drafted, we weren't. We got, we, the city was sued, and then that was part of that, uh, that the agreement was, is reflective of that. And for years, it's been a contentious relationship. And what makes it even more contentious is that they own a 30% or 35% yet have 50% of the vote. This is unequitable. So we have to relook at it with fresh eyes. Regarding of what Mr. Carmel or, or uh, the sanitary district's attorney says, the document, the JPA document that I reviewed makes it clear that it doesn't, 
this is a new plant. That JPA document is, this, is geared toward the same location and an upgrade. So I think that we are in a position as a city to really be in a strong position to take a leadership role. We're the lead agency, and we need to address this issue um, urgently because of um, other matters that uh, have to do with our infrastructure that I'll get into a little bit later with the FMP. I agree. Anyone else? Okay, we're going to yeah, yeah, I have I have something, Bill. Okay. Um, Rob had described the MOU as a hybrid, partly partnership, partly customer. If we go strictly as the motion is, uh, will we get any reimbursement at all until they start? We start billing them for their as a customer, or do we want to get some partnership for what we're doing now, and then treat them operationally as a customer? That's that's just as far as this motion goes. That's my only discussion. The motion is set as strictly a customer. Richard's motion is very clear that they will uh, that the, C, the Cayucas Sanitary District will be a customer. Therefore, there will be no funds from them up front. That's the way I understand the um, the motion. Valerie, as a customer, does that preclude them from providing funds up front and paying as we go, uh, rather than? Um, uh, waiting till the end. I, I don't know. Can the city really foot all foot this whole bill? Do we want to take on that financial responsibility, or were, were you in, originally intending that, as we go for all these studies, that CSD would kick in um, uh, some pro portion of the funding? Even I mean, with, I, I don't know that. We, I, I don't know that if they are a customer only, and that, but in that relationship, that precludes them as they're part of the development of this to, um, to pay as they go, pay as I don't, we go. I don't think our city treasurer would ever turn down a check from anybody. Um, so um, you, they could make payments up front, and we could structure their rates based on their cash pre It's like a down payment. Well, like for the, for the various studies that we outline in your FMP, the, the work that needs to be done, and um, would they, does, by having them as a customer only preclude them from for, for continuing to par participate in that, to continue to participate in staff time, legal time, what have you. If, if the city is carrying the major burden of the roles and responsibility of moving this project forward. You know, I, I'll leave that. I don't think anything, we can agree to anything that we want to. Um, it's an agreement. So there's nothing that precludes any of this. Um, just to another point, could the city afford it to go on their own if Cayucas wasn't paying their fair share of going along? This For this part of it. More, you know. more likely than not, um, probably 100% likelihood, the city was looking at SRF planning loans to, because we don't have the cash reserves in the bank to get us all the way through till we get to the end of the project um, when you get your SRF, uh, um, you know, when you start your construction draws and get reimbursement. So we would have probably taking out an SRF planning loan to get us to that point anyway, even with Cayucas's, if they were to be paying a portion of the planning costs. So that means that they could sustain the planning and the and the RFP uh, procedures and all the other process of a project from inception and progress through the loan do dollars rather than relying on Cayucas okay. dumping in bucks. Dale, did you have something else? Okay. Well, we're we're yeah, Barbara. Uh, sorry. Um, yes, I just have one comment. I want to make sure I, uh, I stated my position clearly. I don't think we have explored the option of coming up with a strong, well-written MOU in this hybrid semi-partnership relationship that Rob was directed to do. So that's my opinion. Okay. This, is, this is John. Yeah, John. Uh, Go ahead. I just want to understand the motion that Richard's motion was to 
have Rob provide to the city council for tomorrow for tomorrow's JPA meeting uh, an MOU that just treats Cayucas as a customer. Is that correct? That's what I understand. That that's that's the motion. That's the motion okay. with, with input for, with input and other. Uh, at, at, we've discussed this for an hour and a half, as you know. So there's a lot of little phrases and clauses that he can throw in there. We aren't going to limit him, but but uh, that's that's the essence of the motion. Yeah, and seconded. Okay, excellent. Because and and I, and I support that because really I, what I see is we have right now an MOU that it allows for the CSD to provide some input on construction of a new plant or, or preliminary planning of a new plant, but ultimately they become a customer. And, and if they balk at that, I, I do want our advisory committee to provide the city council with some guidance on what happens if they don't want to agree to that structure. And it seems to me that the next step would be capacity for them, an agreement that provides for them to have capacity but no input, and ultimately they become a customer. The next step would be, and if they block at that, the next step would be, okay, well, no capacity, and you're going to have to figure out what you're doing on your own, most likely doing your own plant. And in the, in the interest of representing the city, we need to reach that direction as quickly as possible. And, and having, having this other agreement sort of out there as to what the alternative would look like, I, I, I like that. And, and I want the city council to be able to act pretty quickly and get some sort of uh, decision from Iucas as quickly as possible because this, this isn't something that we can spend months talking, uh, discussing. At, at some point, they're going to have to decide that they're, that they're happy with some input and ultimately they're going to be a customer or if they don't like that, then find the capacity, but you're not going to have any input, and we're going to move. This is, this is the city's plant for build, and you're going to become a customer. Uh, but I, w I would like to add to Richard's motion as possible that the city council reach that decision as quickly as possible. Okay, so, good. That's, Thanks. That's, that's all I have to add. It, it looks like the existing uh, city MOU would basically be stripped. Uh, in terms of uh, Merle Bay and CSD are going to do this and they're going to do that to basically outlining, um, stating what Richard's talking about and then outlining what the city's going to do and then um, the so roles and responsibilities of the CSD. But it's not necessarily are they going to be in a decision-making um, role from here on out or approval Approval of this and approval of that. Cayucas. Cayucas. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, it would, so I would, this seems to like this would all be stripped down. Okay. Uh, we we have that. beat this poor horse. No, we really <laughs> beat this horse really <laughs> down to downtrodden. I think we're ready for a vote because we have an, an even more important thing to discuss in the next 25 minutes. So I'm going to ask for a vote on Richard's motion and Dale's second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chair. We, uh, since Mr. Diodati's um, afar, we have to do this via roll call. Uh, oh, okay, okay. And, uh, then, then we need Ms. Secretary. Are I'll, you I'll, I'll do the. Co all right. She doesn't have a microphone okay. over there. All right. So, Let her rip. Um, and I'll start with the motion maker, uh, Commissioner Sadowski. Aye. Uh, Guerrero. Aye. Um, Woodson. Aye. Spagnola. No. Garlick. Aye. Donnelly. No. Love you, Let. Aye. Diodati. Yep. Shively. Aye. Motion passes 7 2. With. Um, Commissioners or board members uh, Spagnola and Donnelly uh, descending. Okay, good. Let's move on. We're, we want to get out of here at 5 o'clock, right? Is that our goal? Yes, that is our goal and our requirement. Uh, uh, there's our requirement, folks, so we have to be very prudent and, uh, and timely in our manner of approach to our 
a new business, which is C1, uh, which is a draft request for proposals, RFP, for the facility master plan, or better known more affectionately as FMP. And staff's recommendation is to review the draft. Uh, Rob, do you want to take us on this? Sure. Um, and maybe to expedite things, um, since we did get direction on the previous item, there's a lot of contract language in the back that we probably don't need to discuss because they'll be based on what the MOU um, is and we probably don't need to uh, relive whether it's the city or the city and district um, over again. So if we'd focus on um, really the scope of work, I think that would help us out quite a bit getting through this. Um, so this document is um, um, written so that we're giving a lot of flexibility to the consultant to um, come up with a master plan for um, the new site. And did that purposefully um, because, as I think I've said, till I'm, people are sick of hearing it, um, the end use of the reclaimed water um, is what dr will drive the treatment process. You don't pick the treatment process to first. So if we were going to do what we are doing right now and continue to discharge partially uh, treated secondary, we wouldn't pick an MBR. But we're not going to do that anymore. We're probably looking at you know, more advanced treatment. So we need some options for um, um, the consultant. Also excluded from this RFP because it's more of a straightforward design project, design, um, design bid build project, is the um, collection system modifications that will be needed, the pump station, and the force main. Um, pretty standard engineering stuff there. We don't have a lot of design. Let me interject a question. Is that pump station that you're talking about, is that pump station going to be the station that would pump all the sewage to the new facility? Yes. OK. So that would be Cayucas and yeah, Morro Bay gonna, and everything. And this is a, an accumulation of one big honking pipe or? Yeah, Cayucas breaks to gravity. Uh -huh. um, and flows by gravity into the existing um, um, common collection system. Yeah. So we need a pump station that takes, we have gravity feed into our existing plant, we have pump station feed. So we need to have that all break to gravity and probably a big wet well, uh -huh. pump it out and uh, go up the road a mile to the, the new the site. New Pretty straightforward um, construction. Um, as just as I was speaking, the only thing that's not quite straightforward is where exactly it's going to be located. Um, in my view, is the center of the roundabout, but I can't get anybody else to buy into that. Um, um, <laughs> it's going to be near the headworks of the existing uh, plant. Potentially, but maybe we don't want it near the headworks. Uh, we're, we're proposing to propose that site for redevelopment. Maybe we don't want it in the middle of the redevelopment area. Maybe we want to locate it more over to the side, nearer the road. Um, so it's going to be somewhere in that general area, probably not where it's existing right now. Um, but you're envisioning an underground facility. I mean, it's not something that people are going to walk by and catch a whiff of it. So. Well, there's going to be above ground facilities, support facilities with it, too. There will have to be a, a right. chemical right. Um, building right. controls. Um, we're not going to, uh, we're not sending people down underground to. Uh, work on uh, controls uh, down there. Everything is going to be above grade there. We're going to have our SCADA all above right, grade. Right. Um, but I mean, as far as there's no odor issues or anything else going on, you're not taking it to open air. You're looking at having a, a wet well. Yeah, yeah, a wet well. And, okay. Thank yeah, you. Exactly. Um, so I just ate up, you know, half of your time talking about that. Um, I, I'm hoping to go through this one page by page so we don't jump back. Okay, maybe um, generally yeah. it's, a, um, it's a request for proposal. Right. Um, we will probably get uh, proposals from a number of firms. Um, the, we select based on qualifications. 
um, once we find the most qualified firm, we negotiate a fee, is the way um, consultant selection process works, and that fee would be within um, some budget. And um, uh, we're proposing to have a pre-proposal meeting so that everybody's all on the, the same page with this. Now, now you say on page 13 you're gonna issue it on March 16th, is that still the schedule? Um, I mean, ideally, that's one week. Ideally, that would be the schedule. Okay, um, so you've got it all prepped and and uh, all prettied up and ready to go, huh? Oh, you do. Well, this is the this is it. This is it. This is this is the city's version. This is this is this is this is what's going to go out. This is it. There's some red lines from various people's yeah. comments, but I carry I carried those along um, so that everybody could see uh, the comments. Okay. Okay. So this okay. this is it, and I think it's very timely that this goes out in in a manner of where we start getting the feedback that this asks for, and I think that that you're you're very appropriate staff. You're on the stick, and and I and I and I have. Uh, endorse it uh, 100%. Uh, it may not be, you know, the old 80-20 rule. It may not be exactly perfect, and we're going to try to make it a little better, but right. you got to get it out. And there's n not that much difference between the Cayucas version of this mm -hmm. and the City of Morro Bay in the technical aspects. Good. Um, they have some contract lang language changes, but those will all be worked out in the MOU portion of the meeting tomorrow night mm -hmm. as opposed to the RFP. Portion. So if we could focus on the more technical issues, if you want to go through it page by page, I think we can well, probably go through it pretty quickly. Yeah. I hope so. Uh, well, let's start with page one. And does anyone have any um, uh, comments uh, at all about page one? Typo, hand delivered. Yeah, uh, uh, that is a, a down four okay. paragraphs proposed on the, on the paragraph General starting with proposals. It's had his hand. Oh, correct. And then above that, the paragraph above that is you need a date in April. April oh, yeah. Okay. Anything else on page one? Um, well, I had a comment on the very cover thing here. It looked like it was something that just kind of pulled off for like notice to bidders or construction contract, and you mix it in with a, a request for proposal and the title somehow. It's like it's kind of a hodgepodge. Okay. So I don't know if you want to really wanted to say it this way, but that's the way it reads to me. I mean, like he said, notice to bidders and took it out, put consultants in instead, and put general conditions and special provisions. That sounds more like a construction contract. Yeah, I think I need to just strike that. Yeah, strike yeah. some of that stuff. Um, and then as far as, I guess, the first page of the actual contract, or the request, you make mention a mandatory a meeting. From my experience, if you don't offer two, <laughs> They will ask for that second one, and it may be that one you wanted to get, so it would be best that you offer two mandatory um, meetings with consultants, so if they can't meet one, they can meet the other, because you want as many people as possible responding. So my recommendation is two. Again, on page 13, you make reference to the right. one meeting. Okay. That's, that's all I have. Page two. Well, I have... Just in general, I have some um, basic editorial comments, but I don't think that that's appropriate to go through them here. And um, so I'll just give you this at the end of the day. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Um, just, again, I think that we're all clear that on two, that on paragraph three, that you need to put a date in. I think it's April 10th. On page 13, that's the date you have. Yeah. And I guess, Valerie, in addition to you, uh, anyone else that has gone through this and has editorial comments and maybe sentence structure, um, uh, I would encourage I would be to happy to receive those. There you go. Uh, um, there you go. Well, sometimes you're, there's just, lack, you know, when you're listing out things, there's lack of consistency. Sometimes you put a period behind a, a sentence and sometimes you right. don't. And just kind of those kind of things, just to yeah. kind of help clean it up yeah. a little bit. Okay, page two. My comment is, is that at the end of the bullets, do you need anything that has, I remember when I was on one commission or another that we were a zero discharge uh, community. Is this a zero discharge project? 
No. Not for the salts, they have to. Okay. And then, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the next thing is, is do you need, is, after, after the bridge episode, do we need a bullet about Native Americans in there? Um, no, because this is design. Um, it'll be addressed in the okay. environmental document. All right. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Um, yeah, I, I got a, I'm going to give you a handout. It'll make it easier, and then I'll just go through the points because this is my handout. My handout pretty much addresses the uh, uh, paragraph where it's under the, under the facilities master plan will include the evaluation and analysis of, and then it says the conveyance. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, me, let me find where you are. I'm but you're on page two? Middle, I'm on page two. Middle of the About two-thirds of the way down. About two-thirds of okay. the way down. Okay. <laughs> Remember, um, we got 15 minutes. Is, okay, yeah. So you, I think there's... Uh, you have a, okay. Um, the issue is that... Main, one of the main issues I have with the FMP is that it needs to be an integrated approach with the collection system. And... Uh, Item one on the handout, it says, in 2008, Mike Watson from the CCC staff wrote a letter telling the city that the sewer plant and the sewer lines needed to be addressed together in the project DEIR, okay? And there's a quote from his letter, and I'm in this uh, little packet that I sent, you have an attachment of Mike Watson's letter. The CCC staff, uh, item two, CCC staff learned recently of the results of well water tests that indicate presence of wastewater in the Morro Basin wells and indicate that they plan to discuss this situation with the city. So they are aware that for seven years, after seven years, Morro Bay has still not addressed this issue. And that's the issue of leaky, a point source of sewage entering our drinking water aquifer in the Morro Basin. At, uh, at the May 2014 regional board meeting, Jeffrey Young indicated concern, he's a board member of uh, the regional board, uh, regarding the blending of nitrated contaminated water with state water, and he mentioned emerging contaminants as a concern. Because Morro Bay staff said sewage had been ruled out as source of nitrates in the wells, it is unlikely that the deep <clears throat> that the detailed testing of the water was done, and a wastewater treatment expert told a colleague of mine that the, unless the brackish water reverse osmosis trains, equipment are, and processing were tied to a specific contaminants in the water, the Deschal plant may not be removing all the potentially harmed substances. Let, let me be clear here, okay? The city had hired a consultant uh, this is the uh, previous staff, had hired a consultant. The consultant had looked at the high nitrates that we have in our Morro Basin wells. They ruled out, the staff had ruled out sewage, and now, uh, recently, we find that sewage is present in our uh, municipal wells. Regarding, regarding the financing grants, in May 2014, at a regional board uh, meeting, a board member asked, do you want to declare a public health emergency? Then we could help you. Mr. Leibach and Mr. Keel here were both present and indicated they did it not. However, were we to do so, substantial federal grants could become immediately available. This, of course, addresses, assumes an integrated approach to the WRF and the collection system repairs. Now, recently, um, I, I'm sure you can expand on it, Jeannie. Recently, the, the federal government and the state are open, have opened huge amounts of cash available to communities that are addressing water supply problems. And this, if we integrate these, these issues, we can, uh, we can go after those grants. I, I'm not sure from my reading of this, that this is excluded. Pardon? I don't think that this RFP, well, I'll, I'll let Rob uh, address it, but 
I, the, from my review of it, I don't think that we are excluding this possibility in this RFP. The, yeah, the, it, those people that are going to respond to this RFP could respond to that. Yeah, but uh, it, it actually does because you're not addressing, you're only addressing the infrastructure to go to the WRF and, and then a separate RFP is going to be issued uh, not the, for not the Not the way I read it. Is that I, correct? I defer to you. I, th I think Richard's reading it correctly. Um, this facility's master plan is intended to hire a expert in treatment plant design. The collection system, repairs, pump station, force main are pretty conventional civil engineering. Uh, we don't need to go through the FMP process to do that. They'll still be addressed in the project EIR um, as project components. Um, we just don't need to um, do facilities master planning for that. They'll be um, more standard design bid build uh, for that, but still addressed in the environmental documents and then constructed at the same time as the treatment plan. Well, well, well my question is, is I thought I read in this that you could uh, uh, come up, the consultants that are going to respond to this RFP could come up with, with what plan that they thought appropriate as to be in the best interest of the city, which would include uh, effluent injection in into the uh, uh, a water table, which could address Richard's issues uh, pretty directly. No, I think what Richard's the, talking about is preventing. Um, there are some existing collection lines that are cracked um, okay. during All right. years of high water. Water flows into them. If the water's low, the sewage may leak leak out of those. So we um, we need to repair those. We have a CIP to do that. It just we need to do it with the wastewater treatment plant project because we need to know where the lift station is going to go and where the force main is going to go. So it, they're tied together. Um, it's our opinion that we don't need to include that in the FMP portion of the, um, of the project. Right. It'll be a project component. We just, there's ultimately, not that, there's not that many alternatives to um, has to be. the uh, more conventional civil engineering repair work that we're doing um, to fix our collection lines. Yeah, Richard, I just want to jump in for a second here. Um, you're absolutely right. We, we did talk with, um, <clears throat> actually it was a consultant. Um, Monica? Monica Kestrel that was talking about uh, potential federal grants and she said that we would jump up to the top of the list in, in several instances if we could prove that there was uh, nitrate contamination in the wells. But what I wanted to mention is that I don't, I really don't think that we've completely pinpointed um, the nitrate contamination to wastewater. Yes, uh, we have. Well, because I have read documents from the Regional Water Quality Control Board prepared by their own um, uh, hydrogeologist that, that disagrees. So yeah, that, those those reports were seven years ago. They came out recently. Sucralose test at the May 2014 or yeah 2014 meeting, a presentation was given, and the and the regional board directed staff to do a sucralose test. Sucralose um, is the indicator. If you have sucralose in your drinking water, it's identified as wastewater. That's the latest science that, that shows. Mm -hmm. So it's been identified that that is, the consultant was wrong, in other words. And the regional board was incorrect in their assumptions. So now we need to address that issue. And if we address that issue, and it's a point source, we know where it is, right. okay? And so with that in mind, we could bring in this RF. RFP together and um, with by fixing that and integrating it I, I'm a I'm a firm believer that separating uh, collections and and, 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 and uh, treatment is is a mistake in this particular case and uh, um, when you say a point source does that mean one location um, well we know of a location let me let me maybe expand on it no well, we got okay. six minutes okay okay um, if you want, I can expand, uh, talk to well, you about what, it later. What I but propose is that we, we attach this to the minutes. 
attach Richard's papers. Richard made made a, a, a very significant effort, and I appreciate all you all your input. Okay. And I think you did good. And I and I you don't have to you don't have to integrate them in the minutes, but attach them to the minutes as as input to the meeting. Would that be all right? Would that be all right with yeah. you, Stan? Yeah. And like I said, it's the collection system repairs, the force main. Um, the lift station are integral components of the project, just not of this FM uh, facilities master plan. Uh, can, can I also add, I, had, I, had a, I have another um, thing that is an opportunity for the city. Currently, um, uh, uh, like a company like Alseptic, uh, they pump out a lot of septic tanks and all these uh, honey huts, and they either take it to Santa Maria or they take it to Soledad. I have, I believe that this is a opportunity, if we get the right treatment, we could have that um, disposal done here and we can integrate it into this project. And this will be a, a income generator for the, for the city. It would, might require two force mains going up 41 to address so you can separate the um, high chemical ones from domestic waste. It might require that, so then it has a treatment there. But it's something to uh, think about when we look at this uh, project in a more holistic way. So basically make our plant also for septage receiving, yeah. because there's limited spots where you can get rid of septage. It, it, it should yeah. be looked yeah. at. Yeah. yeah, it should be an option. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Rob, yeah, can I ask a quick question? Sure. sure. Rob, tomorrow, Rob, tomorrow at the JPA meeting, uh, you, you mentioned Cayucas has a version as well. W what if the two parties can't agree on a on a final version uh, tomorrow? Um, I'm likely to ask our council to give me direction to release a city RFP. And so all the all the references to the CSD would be deleted out of this version. Yes. Okay. And then an alternative would be to come back with revisions for a future JPA meeting. Yes. Yeah, and so I just want to reiterate, I think that speaks to why the city council needs to act quickly on some sort of resolution with this MOU and, and have Cayucas decide as quickly as possible uh, what, what relationship they want with the city uh, and what terms, because it, 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 the, the current structure that doesn't work for uh, uh, quick and um, response um, process to working on a, on a plant within a six-year timeline. That's all, that's all I have to say. And, I, and I'm, I'm going I'm to say goodbye to everybody because I think it's five anyway. So I, thank you for letting me call in. I appreciated it. Uh, thanks for your input and thanks for your time. And uh, we hope to see you in the future, man. I do know that I've, I've, uh, I've been traveling quite a bit the last few months, and I hope I am here yeah, one of these Wednesdays. We'll, so I can yeah, we've been again. keeping track of you. You're doing good. Keep it up. Take care, guys. Thank you. And, and while, while we're off of John, is there any public input on this before we, uh, we want to make sure we get public in, input on this? Okay, yes. Hi. Hello. Identify yourself again. Okay. Marla Joe Bruton sadowski and I just um, want to follow up really quickly. I myself and another um, citizen in Morro Bay were the ones who um, presented, made a 20-minute presentation to the regional board, Central Coast Regional Board, about the nitrate contamination in our wells. And I'm a co-author on a report uh, written eight years ago saying that we, we conflicted with, with the regional board's experts and the experts that the city had hired and that we believe that sewage is, in fact, entering our drinking water aquifer at 41 in Maine in that area. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, I have a report that shows the aquifer boundaries. It's very narrow there. Um, anyway, so I'm available if anybody wants to um, see that report. I can make it available on the web, what have you. That would be good. And the sucralose does not degrade in the water, and the cows, and they don't use it in, in uh, fertilizer. So, you know, it's people eat the sucralose and then release it. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. Any other co public comments? You want to come up and s say hello? No, okay. I, I do before we move yeah, on. I know. We, we, I'm, come, I'm bringing it okay. back. And Valerie, you got, you got, you got the table. Yeah. It sounded like you wanted to no, end, no, the, end the meeting. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> we, um, in regards to the project schedule and the deliverables, um, in this uh, RFP, uh, don't you want to um, <clears throat> have your outline your schedule and your beginning and your end dates, and within that, the deliverables, when, when you anticipate certain deliverables are due, and not only that, but then build into that the review time and who's going to be reviewing it, the city, you know, if it's a 60-day review period between deliverable. But I would think that you'd want to have that in here so that they know, you know, how quickly they're going to have to move in terms of, you know, getting, it just says, anyway, so that's, that's one thing that I would recommend is that um, you have a schedule that shows the beginning and end dates, your deliverables, draft and final, also build into within every deliverable the internal reviews that are going to occur. And um, there's one thing, too, that I know that you have a 33, 65, and 90% completion stage. I'm not 100% sure how long this FMP is going for, but if it's going to be going for more than three months or what have you, is it about a year-long study? that actually what the, you need to include in the schedule uh, are monthly progress reports. And what those uh, progress reports uh, do, and that could be something that they submit along with their monthly billings, but what they've accomplished um, during that period of time and identify any problems or issues or needs that need to be uh, addressed. You know, what's, what's, what, what, have I, what, what have we done? But we also are facing this issue and just have it in writing. But a monthly progress report seems to be an appropriate, I would recommend it, yeah. as opposed to just waiting for 30, 65, 90. Yeah. Um, I, I, I endorse that uh, very strongly. I'm, a, I'm an old uh, project uh, person myself, and I found a integrated CPM method uh, scheduled to be extremely valuable in evaluating status and what needs to be done and where to where to uh, put your resources to stay on schedule and i think that this needs to be uh, substantially uh, expanded to see what you're i realize you're going to go for an engineering and then a construction schedule but i think you need to have this fleshed out a little more to be and to start and to start uh, strong arming expectations on on schedule and information that you would uh, really feel valuable from that schedule. You know, you've got your start of work, you've got your end of work, and what's in between, and um, then it's also so that it doesn't come as a surprise that those those deliverables are all going to be reviewed and by who and how much time do they have to review them? Okay. And then, just so it's all spelled out. That's Dale, we missed you. You got anything else? No, I'm good. Well, let's go around the corner. How about? Yeah. The only, come for the interest of time, only comment I have is later on, page 12. I don't know if you want to go over that now. No, no, that, I, I just think, want to go, go ahead. ahead. You, if you've got something that's germane, that this is going to go on the street in the next week, and if you think well, it's a, a, an issue that needs to be addressed by, you know, Rob, let, yeah, it has, to, it has to do with the evaluation selection. It starts on 11, goes on at 12, and you have a little form format of scoring. And um, I guess it's a based upon a combination of, of their qualifications and how they did in their proposal. I don't know about this particular project. Some projects, the way they're funded, means you have to go through a two-step proposal where you evaluate qualifications select your shortlist your top firms and then ask proposals from that shortlisted group. I don't know, that is not faster necessarily, but because of some funding sources, you have to go that route. I don't know what, what, what your limitations are here, but right now your evaluation form is based upon your qualifications and your proposals. We may not pick the best firm, but we like their proposal, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. 
and that could help staff too. If you boil it down to uh, anyway, maybe three uh, candidates, then that that helps staff as well. Yeah, Steve. Actually, I have nothing other than a few grammar and a couple spelling. I'm okay. good with it. Thank you. Jenny. Um, ditto. Barbara. Uh, I didn't see any uh, mediation or arbitration in there. I don't know if you use that. If you do, add it in. Thank you. Uh, is that in the legal section? That's in the legal. TMC's, yeah. That's where it would be. You got anything else, Barbara? No, no, thanks. How about you, Steve? Richard. I mean, Richard. Uh, uh, Richard, good. you're done? I, my only last comment is, is I think on page seven, the intended, intended use of the consultant's work. I think, I think it's, it's not clear to me exactly how you're going to use this document and, I, and where you're going to go from here. And that last paragraph, intended use of the consultant's work, I think needs to be clarified uh, to be nice, but maybe uh, uh, clearer as to where you're going to go from here and how you're going to do it. I think the last sentence is especially sub needs uh, uh, better words, uh, and and I I don't understand from that paragraph where you're going to take this document and where you're going to go with it and what the next steps are and I think that would be very helpful to uh, especially a person bidding on this on on uh, clarifying their scope of work and that's all I have Unless there's something else for someone else around here that we need something else real quick. I had to agree with the last sentence. It didn't make any sense to me because you were referring back to, oh, later on you're going to be um, developing some bridging documents, but it's not clear what a bridging document is. And so I, you may know what that is, but the average reader. And hopefully the. Um, I don't think so. I think the consultants <laughs> that will be proposing on this will know. I think it's what. better to, will lead to the development of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's if they don't know what a bridging document is, we probably don't want them uh, proposing on the well, project. No. No, she's that's right. That's not really true. You should spell it out what it yeah, is that you want. Yeah, it's it's better to to get it into the objective. Yes. Um, just one thing, and I've I've mentioned this for years. I I would like to have staff really take a close look at what we need for capacity on this uh, water reclamation facility. You know, average the way they're calculated with average flows. I mean, we have such a standard of deviation and variance in our flows that we need to address the you know the tourism and. And, um, and 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 that. So I would just revisit, you know, just to revisit that capacity issue. Thanks. Well, and I do have one other thing, is that you put the demolition of the existing WBRF in there, and I don't think that's germane to where we are. I think you've got you get your. I mean, your your plate is full, and I think that we can address this two, three years from now, and I don't think that this is a, a, a big deal. And, uh, and I think it could be done by a many, many, many people other than the, this primary uh, 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 people that you're addressing. I, I, I got a, just a question for staff. Um, on this um, corp, corporate yard that's part of this project, um, uh, are you planning on putting a gas station facility at the new location? We want to get out of the fueling business. Um, it's, uh, we do so little fueling, it makes no economic sense for us to be in the business. So uh, we're getting, we'll be getting out of the fueling business before, um, uh, I think if Dave had his druthers, our, our city manager, <coughs> we'd be out today. But uh, we need to figure out a place to fuel our fire vehicles first. Okay, before I close, I'm going to let everyone else around the table make a closing comment. I'm going to start with Dale, Valerie, 
Yeah. Okay, we need to poll. I wanted to thank you, Mr. Woodson, for chairing the meeting today and in the past. You do such a wonderful job. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, it. Bill. Thank you. Steve. No comment. Uh, I'm good. Um, I think it was a very productive meeting, and um, I'm very curious what's going to happen tomorrow. Barbara. No comment. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. And Richard. Uh, the, the only only thing I, I I have to say is I, I think that if staff can uh, meet with the Northern Chumash Tribal Council as soon as possible, we can get some of these um, other issues resolved uh, and have some plan for a uh, for a lift station location. Well, one thing that we need to take into consideration too that there's more than one Native American group that would need to be consulted. And so that's something that the city needs to take seriously and start developing that contact list. So that's it's not one of just the, one group. Yeah, that's one of the fatal flaws that we'll be looking at along with biology. Um, we'll be starting that work prior to this facilities master plan. We'll be um, getting a um, archaeological resource expert on board to work with us, a biologist and a geotechnical engineer to get started on some pre-studies. Um, that, that work will be going out uh, um, immediately. Okay, this calls for the adjournment of this meeting and we will adjourn to our next scheduled meeting at April 8, 2015 at 3 p.m. at this uh, the same location and we sure hope to see you come and be part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you.